I'm just going to walk you through the process of constructing this logo for Tulip. Uh, this is the final work and uh, obviously we're not going to, just going to use that as a reference for creating the logo. So put it down here. So we're going to start with basic geometric shapes. So the circle and we're going to divide that up into, um, into one section. So I'm using smart guides here to break up the, the logo. So I'm kind of just making this corner shape, the left one just down there. So you can see the grid view to make sure everything is aligned. You can see it snaps there. So you know it's right. Um, so basically I'm getting this shape there. You can see that using the pathfinder and you get that shape. So now we have part of the logo, you duplicate it. I'm just holding down alt to duplicate it. Um, going to create a full circle with these quadrants. All right, so let's bring it into the middle. Um, and then I'm going to rotate. So I've just clicked it and then I'm holding down shift and rotating it and rotate it again. So we've got the one shape, that top left, uh, top middle shape. So I'm going to use the Pathfinder to combine all those four sh shapes. So it's just all one, um, one shape. If you were doing something a bit more creative, um, you could change the colors or whatever it may be. Um, this logo, we're just using that one color. So I've just noticed that it's not exactly, um, exactly perfect here. So I can go in, go in and make sure they're all um, close. So I do this much more precisely if I'm not doing the video, but um, you can zoom in as much as you want to, to make sure it's all precise. Uh, let's do it anyway. So you can see how they're all intersecting now. So that's the shape. Um, force quadrant still, then you go to the pathfinder and you combine them into one path. So now it's just one shape. And now we're going to duplicate it into four shapes. So I'm just holding down Alt and Shift, dragging it to duplicate it, um, rotating it. Um, again, another shortcut. Um, and then I'm copy pasting it. So now we have four items. And then we can move them out. as we see fit. So I'm going to make this a bit smaller. So I often just eye it to begin with to, to find the right balance. So it's a bit of a nice balance there. I can probably bring it in a little bit more. Maybe a touch more. So there we have something that's close. Um, we can, might delete these and I just duplicate these to make sure it's all perfect. Um, and that's the logo mark. And then we add in type. Let's add in some type here. Set the color. Uh, make sure it's centered with the logo. And can pump up the size. I'm not sure. Let's do that. Pump up the size. Make sure it's all centered. I'm grouping the objects here, making it centered. And there you go. Outline the font or the box here. Create outlines, and now they're all one shape. And then you group all the objects together, so it's Apple G. And then you have the the final logo. Um, and then yeah, you can change the orientation around. So you can have another version where it's um, to the left or to the right, I should say. Change the sizing. And if you're refining these logo, you'd just, uh, you'd put in some guides. So you can see here the guides, um, the light blue lines, and you could go in and refine um, the exact positioning. So you'd want these lines to match up with that. And that it's just rough for now, but a bit much more precise when you're doing it final. Um, and then turn off the grid and you have the, the logo mark and logo.
So um, then after that, you'd create different versions. So you have the stack version down here and you could also create a version that's uh, for reverse. So let's say uh, you're gonna put on a blue background, change it to white and there you go. So that's the process for creating the logo for Tulip. Let me know if you have any questions.